Hello, welcome everyone. This is Leah and these are my fabric panels. So this is a lot. I've separated them by the type of project I'm going to be doing. Now before we start this, I want to mention those who are here on my channel for upcycling projects, have no fear. I am not going to tackle this whole scrap basket all in one go. So I'm going to do a couple projects from here and then move on to my new scrap basket, which is exclusively for upcycling. So I'm going to go back and forth between the two. So no worries. We're going to cover everybody. But today we're going to do a project with these two. Sound good? Okay. Now, the other thing I decided when I was planning these projects is I wanted kind of an accompanied fabric for contrast. Or as we go through some of these over here, there's going to be, you know, bag projects, garment projects, all kinds of different things that I will need different fabrics. So I went into my stash and I got a whole <laughs> bunch of fabric. So as you know, one of my rules is if I cut into a fabric, I have to use it. So there will be other fabrics that are going to be added to the scrap basket as time goes on. And by the time I'm done with all of these panels, I should have a scrappy mix that I'll have to choose from. So for this one, I thought this one would be really good. And I went and got a few little bits of fabric. So these are all fat quarters. So I'm going to use those as well. And what we're going to make today is a snack mat. There will be a few fun elements that we're also going to add to this, but I will show those to you in a bit. Let's go cut up our fabric. If anyone is interested, this is the only information I have on this particular panel. I find it much easier to cut up panels with a scissor than a rotary cutter. It's just too hard to line things up. I'm making the prototype with you today. So when I was doing my cutting, I wasn't exactly sure the measurements. So I'm just gonna rough cut all these squares at first. And as we go, I will make that clarification for you as far as the exact measurements. Decided to take you along on one of my batch cutting journeys. I'm obviously only going to be making one of these mats with you today, but I just decided to go ahead and cut everything all at once. So I'm going to cut my sashing at an inch and a half and that way my sashing will be an inch between my four blocks going vertically and horizontally and I'm gonna mix and match with all of these so I'm going to have both or these orangey colors and for my contrasting block with the other two smaller flower blocks, I'm having this stripe. And for right now, I'm cutting this at three inches, but again, I'm going to adjust that in a bit.
So for my backing, I'm rough cutting these at about eight inches and then I'm going to cut them again at about 14, but I'm going to also eventually cut that down as well. We have backing, we have sashing in two different colors. We have our contrast small square, our flower squares, and the big flower squares. And of course I have my little pile of scrappies. I'm going to be using fusible fleece. I just find it's a, a really good weight and I can control my fabric by fusing it on one side for any kind of mat or mug rug or coaster. So this is my final layout. My big flower square on the left with my four smaller squares and sashing. And I'm going to use this variegated star thread. I'm going to add my sashing to my left two blocks vertically first. For measurements, the small squares are two and three quarters inches, and my big square is six inches. So after the four squares and the sashing are sewed together, it will also finish at six inches. And now I'm adding the right two squares. And now we can add the horizontal sashing to the mix. and all my seams are quarter inch seams. I'm not worrying too much about either side, it's just getting that sashing to line up. and everything's pressed and trimmed and now I can sew the two blocks together and I am just going to sew it right to the fusible. I have this vintage rickrack that I thought would be a really fun touch to this snack mat. So I've measured out approximately a yard and a half 
and I'm going to add it in several different ways. I especially think it's going to look really cute poking out from under the binding, so I'm going to add that as well. We're also going to do some embroidery. So I started with one, but eventually, as you will see, I've decided to add three different colors of embroidery. When I sew my rickrack on, I am just sewing straight down the center. I'm sewing it about a half inch in from the edge. If you wanted it to show a bit more, you could sew it a little bit further in. The corners will be covered by the binding so we don't have to have any fancy looking corners with the rickrack. So I'm actually just cutting it off on one side and then starting again on the next. My sister just gave me these Fiskars thread snips and I wanted to show you. They're really fun. I'll add them to my Amazon list down below. So I've decided on these three colors. I'm going to do French knots on the sunflower and I'm going to outline the leaves and I'm going to do a little chain stitching over on the right side as well. I think that just doing some French knots around the petals will leave plenty of room for your mug. I consider myself still a very newbie at embroidery, so please bear with me in my slow, deliberate, and very inexperienced embroidery. But I just want to show you how easy it is. I just kind of repeat the steps in my head, sometimes out loud. For French knots, it's just a matter of looping it twice and putting it through the same hole and also holding that with my left hand so that it doesn't get too loose when you pull it through.
I think that even if it interfered with your mug, it would be fine. They don't stick out too much. As far as the leaves go, I am going to do a seed stitch. So for a seed stitch, it's a really good outline stitch. It's a pretty easy stitch as well, which is why I do it. <laughs> so your thread is up and you're gonna go over a quarter inch. And before you pull it all the way through, you hold that loop because you're gonna come in about halfway in between. And then you can pull that through. So same thing again, go down half inch, or excuse me, a quarter inch over, and then hold the loop, and then come back up halfway. So say it with me, quarter inch over, hold the loop, come back up in between, pull it. It really does help to say it out loud. If you can see the difference between the two leaves, the one on the right in the swirl, I got a little lost because you have to keep that loop going in the right direction. I kept switching directions, holding the loop as I would go around that little swirl. So I got the hang of it on the left side and that looks much nicer. Now for the right side, I'm going to draw some lines with my friction pen. It really does help to draw straight lines. That kind of changed the game for me when I started doing that. I don't know what I was thinking, not drawing lines before to help me. That's why doing the panels and following a design is so much fun with embroidery because you don't need to worry about your design. You just follow the lines of the design or you draw it on yourself. I'm just splitting the difference in this space and I'll be following the outline of each square. This side I am doing a chain stitch and this one's a little bit more difficult so I had to have lots of practice and if you see they aren't the best but I'm gonna attempt to try and show you. Again, this is not, this part is not a tutorial, but it's a demonstration of a beginner. So let's try to say the steps together yet again. So you have your thread on the front side and you're gonna go back through the same hole or at least close to it, holding that loop yet again with your non-sewing hand.
you're going to go over a quarter inch and come back up and then your needle goes through that loop and you're going to pull that not too tight but just so you can see that little chain now you're going to go back through or close to that same hole hold the loop come back up a quarter inch away go through the hoop or loop pull it go back down through the hole hold the loop come back up quarter inch away go through the loop and pull so I just keep saying those things because otherwise I get confused. Now just trimming my fusible or my batting off so that we can prepare for the backing and binding. The final measurement should be six by 11 and a half. I'm going to trim this backing down now in preparing my binding to an inch all around my mat. I'm putting all my little tiny scraps in this little bag and it will reside in my scrap basket. The first thing I'm going to do is just fold up my corners just to meet the corner of the mat and finger press that so that I have a crease and then I'm going to snip those little corners off to get rid of the excess And now I can fold up the rest of that corner. And if you find it easier to finger press or glue based or press, however it works for you, you just want to fold that binding or the backing in to meet the mat. And your corners should meet 
perfectly. I was using a little glue based just to help that process out. I couldn't find my Elmer's School glue, which is what I prefer because it's so light and it doesn't gum up your needle at all. But once you have that folded in once, so about a half inch, and your corners are meeting nicely, Now you can use however you want to again with glue basting or just with seam tape or whatever. You, you fold those corners up onto the mat first and then it folds nicely into a mitered corner once you flip that one more time up onto your mat. And one last step, and that is to sew your binding onto your mat. You can do a decorative stitch here. You could hand stitch it. I'm just doing an edge stitch, top stitch here. So here's the one that we made together, and I have to admit that I it isn't my best work, especially the binding. And the reason for that is I was getting a migraine towards the end of filming this one, and I didn't realize it because I couldn't really see, and I had to go to bed and all that, you know, migraines. And so when I was able to take a look at it, I realized, ugh binding did not turn out very good so I made another one and I'll be making more turned out much better but uh, I was able to do different different things more French knots on this one and my chain embroidery is a little bit better so that's fun so each one will be a little bit different and with that in mind one of my first things I'd like to show you is I have decided, so I've kept, I'm going to have a few of these for me to have, and then I've kept the rest, or set aside the rest, to offer as kits. So I put together, I almost had more fun <laughs> with the packaging than, uh, than doing that. No, that's not true. Uh, so what I did is I cut everything out again rough cut so you will be able to uh, cut it down to the appropriate sizes so backing batting big flower two small flowers stripes and a two Different sashings you can choose or you can mix and match, but there's enough sashing uh, for two different selections. And I had these little wood thimbles, and so I did a yard and a half of rickrack and then three different colors of embroidery floss. So I have enough of these supplies to make, I came up with 14 kits. So it'll be wrapped up in a nice little ribbon that you also can sew with. 
and um, fun little packaging. So that's a kit that I'm going to have in my Etsy shop. So see the link below. It will also come with instructions. I'm finishing finishing uh, writing up the instructions. I'm also going to do this as a digital download, the PDF pattern. So once the kits are done, there will also be a pattern of this in my shop. And you'll have to give me a bit more time for that because I'm teaching myself graphic design and all of that. It's it's actually kind of fun, but I've never done it before, so it's taking me a bit longer. Um, <laughs> but I will let you know when that is available, but the kits are available right now, and you can go grab yourself one of those. But how fun is that? So why this is, again, I mentioned this earlier, but why this is fun to embroider and embellish a panel is because the design is already there for you. So, I mean, I could have gone crazy. I could have done all kinds of embroidery in here as well. Of course, stripes, that's, you could be embroidering all the stripes too. So panels are great for embellishing because you don't have to come up with your own design for that. It's there ready for you. And always a small mini quilt of any size is a good way to have fun. So thank you for sharing this time with me. And I will be back with another design from a panel in my next video. And I will see you then. Bye.